Hi kids, we're going to start um, this chunk of electricity out uh, with a lecture called Parts of a Circuit and Circuit Diagrams. Um, this standard is all about electrical circuits, so things that have um, plugs that you can plug into a wall or a battery and, and would turn on um, a device inside of a circuit. So using the energy in the electrons to um, transform into some other kind of energy that we might want to use. So the first thing that you have to include in every circuit is an energy source. The circuit starts off all full of electrons because every atom and every um, item on Earth is full of electrons, but those electrons don't have any reason to move and they don't have any extra energy that the circuit can use to transform into useful things. So in order to, uh, to make use of our circuit, we have to provide some sort of source of electrical energy. Some examples of energy sources, batteries, wall outlets, solar panels, generators, these are all things that you may have plugged devices into in the past. Uh, of course, if you were wanting to draw a picture of your circuit, it's not very convenient to have all these different things that look really different and look really complicated. So um, there's a standard diagram called a circuit diagram that uses standard symbols to represent the energy source, um, regardless of what it is. And so this would be a simplified energy source for a circuit diagram. I should say with a little asterisk there that um, there are actually different symbols for different energy sources, but in this class we're going to just use the same symbol for all of them because I want to simplify our life and not make you guys memorize so many different things. So in this class, every time you want to put an energy source into a circuit, uh, you're going to draw this. And what we got here is a big line, a long line. That represents the positive side of the energy source. Um, if you've used batteries before, you know they have a positive and a negative side, and that positive side is going to be the one with the little uh, dongle sticking out of it. And then we got the negative side of the battery over here. That's um, the other end of the battery, the flat side of the battery. Uh, wall outlets also have positive and negative sides, so would generators, so would solar panels. And uh, it may or may not have a little plus sign that is uh, showing you again which side is the positive side. These two long lines coming out of the energy source are the wires that will allow the electrons to move. Um, so that's basically what you should expect to see. Occasionally you'll notice it looking a little bit different than this, but um, that's just because uh, there are actually slightly different symbols for other things, but you know I think you can probably generalize and assume that most things that look like this are going to be energy sources in your circuit diagrams. The second thing that you're going to want to include in every circuit is what's known as a resistor. The resistor is the element in each circuit that transforms the electrical energy from the power source into some other kind of energy. In other words, it's the thing in the circuit, um, it's the point of the circuit, okay? It's the thing that you wanted to plug into the wall. It's the device that you're wanting to use. So for example, uh, a light bulb is a resistor. You plug that into the wall, you want to use that device to transform electrical energy into light. Toaster would be another example. This is a little electric motor that could power a little toy car, so you plug that into a battery and uh, it spins, so it creates some kinetic energy out of electrical energy. You can also have plain old resistors. So this is a, a little device that doesn't make light or sound or anything fun. All it does is it takes electrical energy and transforms it into heat. It basically wastes energy. Uh, you'd have that in a circuit if you had another device that was sensitive to electricity and you didn't want it to get too much um, of that electrical energy. So you could have a plain old resistor in a circuit. <clears throat> Even though these devices all look very different, uh, we're going to draw them all the same in our circuit diagrams. Uh, and the way we're going to draw a resistor is a series of up and down zigzags with wires coming out of either end. So the electrons are going to flow in one end of the resistor and out the other. Um, and where they're going through those zigzags is the, the time when those electrons are going to be transforming their energy into some other kind of energy. I've already kind of mentioned this in the other slides, but the next thing you're going to want to include in all your circuit diagrams is wire. Uh, you need to have something conductive, a conductor, to connect the energy source to the resistor and then back again to the energy source. Uh, you need to have wire that makes a complete circuit. Uh, circuit comes from the same root as circle uh, because that's the idea. There has to be a complete path from one end of the battery through, through the resistor and back again uh, using conductive wire. A couple comments about wire. 
Uh, for our, the purposes of this class, the length of the wire in your circuit is not relevant. That means that the wire doesn't really do anything except for provide a pathway or a conduit for the electricity to flow. Long wire, short wire, medium wire doesn't make any sort of difference. There is an asterisk, asterisk there, of course, because the real world is slightly different than that, but for this class, we're going to assume that it doesn't matter how long the, the wire is. Some examples of wire, well, wire, okay, you've all seen wires plugged into your devices. But there are other things that can act as a conductive um, connection between two things. Humans, of course, if you um, touch a bare wire and um, touch the two ends of a bare wire, for example, the electricity is going to flow right through you and that's going to be a problem. Um, water can be uh, act like a wire. Water can make electrical connections between two things. So mostly we use this nice safe uh, conductor that's enclosed in a, in a plastic um, or rubber casing to keep the electrons inside, um, but occasionally there are other things that act as wire. In our circuit diagram, you've already seen this, but the wire is just the straight line that connects things. The last device that we're going to put in our circuits is a switch or a button, and this is sort of optional. You don't have to have a switch in your circuit, but it's a really convenient thing to have in there. Um, as you are aware, switches and buttons are used to turn on or off devices. Um, in, in our specific vocabulary, we, we say that they're used to open um, or close a circuit. Open means disconnect a wire and close means to connect a wire. So we can use switches to um, break a circuit or complete it, which allows us to turn cer certain resistors on or off. There's lots of examples of switches and buttons. Light switch on your wall is a switch. Um, you might have seen big power buttons on things. Circuit breakers out in your uh, garage or whatever your circuit is uh, are examples of switches. You can build a switch out of anything that you can connect and disconnect, any wire that you can connect or disconnect. Um, when you guys are building your mystery boxes, you might want to make your circuits out of just like two paper clips. You can attach wires to both ends of the paper clips, and when you hook them together, it's a switch. When you, it's, an, it's a closed switch. When you disconnect them, it's going to be an open switch. In a circuit diagram, switches, again, can look lots of different ways, but this is what we're going to use in our class for all switches, whether or not it's a light switch or a button. Um, it kind of looks like a little open door. So this is representative of an open switch, which means the electricity cannot flow through it. Okay, the electricity um, gets stuck, basically, at the end of that wire and can't, can't go any further. So we've um, got wire coming in both sides and a switch in our circuit diagram. Okay, so let's put all of that information together into a single big circuit diagram. This would be um, an example of a circuit diagram. You'll notice, first thing, that we've got our um, energy source there. It might be a battery, might be the wall socket. Can't really tell because we're going to use the same symbol for all of them, but it's got plus side and a minus side. Um, and we also see that we've got our two resistors in there, R1 and R2. Those might be toasters, they might be light bulbs, they might be radios. Um, you'd have to label them so that we knew what they were. And you'll notice that we have conductive wire connecting um, those resistors back to the power source, from, from one side of the battery through the resistors back to the power source. Um, there are also two switches in this circuit, labeled S1 and S2. S2 is a master switch, which means that without that switch being closed, nothing's going to happen in the circuit. Uh, we don't have a complete circuit if S2 is open. So um, when S2 is open, everything is off. When S2 is closed, then the electrons do have a complete path through that circuit and back to the battery where they started. A quick note about that, you'll notice that I kind of drew the path of the uh, electrons from the, the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. Um, that is a convention set up by Isaac Newton that he thought that electrons were positive and they moved out of the positive side of the battery. We now know that electrons are negative, so what's really happening is those electrons are leaving the negative side of the battery and going through the circuit and coming back to the positive side of the battery. But um, because he was such a influential um, person when it came to electrical theory, uh, electricians have just stuck with that standard, which means throughout this unit we're going to pretend that 
that it's not the electrons that are moving, but it's the, the positive charges moving from the positive side of the battery back to the negative side of the battery. It shouldn't really make any difference. If I was, you know, dictator of the world, I'd change it, but it is what it is. So usually when I draw the flow of electrons, I'll leave the, the positive side of the battery and come back to the negative, even though that's the reverse of what's actually happening in the real world. Um, so let's talk quickly about switch S1. S1 is um, not a master switch because there is a complete loop without S1 in there, but when S1 is um, closed, the electrons actually have a choice, right? They, they move away from that positive side of the battery, and right here they can choose to go through R1, or they could choose to go this way through S1 if that was closed. So what would the electrons choose? Well, um, in the next slideshow we'll talk a little bit, little bit about how we can use an analogy of a school day to represent a circuit. Uh, and in that analogy, the electrons are like the kids. Uh, they start at home in their battery and they uh, move through the school day, sometimes having choices of where to go and sometimes not having a choice. The uh, resistors in this analogy are like tests during your school day. So you can imagine those electrons leave the battery and if S1 is closed, they have a choice between going through this resistor and taking a test or going around the resistor and not taking a test. Uh, hopefully most of you guys can put yourself in their shoes and imagine that if that switch is closed, uh, those electrons are gonna choose to avoid that test if they can. And um, they don't have a choice about R2, right? They've gotta go through it to get back to the battery. So they're going to go through R2 and come back to the battery. So if, uh, if S2 and S1 are both closed, if both those switches are closed, what you'll notice is that R2, this light down here, is going to be on, but R1 up at the top would not be on because all the electrons are choosing to avoid it and go around. So I wanted to basically show you guys that switches can do different things in circuits. There's master switches that can control everything, or there's little switches that can control individual lights on a local level, like S1 is doing. Quick summary of this lecture. Every circuit has to have three things. It has to have a source of energy, a battery. It has to have a place to use that energy, a resistor, and it has to have something conductive that connects them and makes a complete circuit. We have standard symbols to draw all of these things that you guys will be expected to know. And electrons only flow when there's a complete path back to the battery. Switches are the devices that control those paths that electrons take and they can control um, which of your devices are being used and which ones are not. Thanks.